My name is Margaret Poole. I'm great-granddaughter of Frederick Victor Poole, who was known in the family as Victor. Um, we never referred to him as Frederick, apparently. That was his preference. I know he was born in Southampton, England, and when he was quite young, he won an award that was presented to him by Queen Victoria. After his schooling in England, he uh, taught for a while and uh, with a school that was affiliated with Cambridge as a secondary school. And he gave that up and became an illustrator for the London, uh, London Illustrated News. A Dr. Luden from uh, Toronto came over to have his portrait painted and met Poole and had him do some personal portraits. And he's the one that brought him back to Can over to Canada in 1911. Apparently Poole didn't like the cold weather in Canada. And in 1912 he came down to New York. A uh, man from Chicago came to uh, New York to have some illustrations done. And he met Poole and he talked him into coming to Chicago where he did work for the SNA Film Studio and posters and uh, advertising work. And he was an assistant professor at the um, Art Institute in Chicago. That's where he met uh, DeForest Shook, who already was, uh, I guess, coming up to Bailey's Harbor on vacations and that. And eventually the uh, Art Institute asked them to start a school, an art school in Bailey's Harbor for disabled veterans who were attending the Art Institute. I understand that it was federally funded and it was mostly for um, what they called in those days shell-shocked veterans from the First World War. So it was mostly young men and they camped out, or if it was married couples they'd stay at the hotel down on what's now Frogtown Road. They became an important part of the Bailey's Harbor summer scene. They took part in baseball games, they went to the dances, um, they always had a float in the Fourth of July parade. I think it was quite a big addition to Bailey's Harbor back in those days. And eventually both he and, and Shook bought property on um, a little lane off of Rugtown there. And uh, they, the art school went on for a few years and uh, I don't really know why it just petered out I suppose maybe over time. Uh, but they both kept coming back. My great grandparents put together a log cabin on the land in Bailey's Harbor from some old pioneer barns. And the story was that my great-grandmother had a pretty busy social life and my great-grandfather was having trouble working because there was too much going on. So I'm not sure which came first, but there was a, a one-room guest cottage built next to the cabin and then there was a separate studio built on the land. So he would have a working space he was still teaching at the Art Institute, uh, still doing commercial work um, and coming up to Door County in the summers and doing painting and landscaping along with the figurative stuff he always did. The Stelmer's painting at the Catholic Church in Sister Bay was uh, commissioned by Cardinal Mundelein in Chicago in 1928, but uh, the Cardinal died bef before uh, Poole had the painting done, so Poole just kept the painting. Cardinal Mundelein had commissioned the work, as he had commissioned other works. For some reason, by the time Frederick Poole was done with it, uh, Cardinal Mundelein did not take it and the estate did not want it after he died. And so Frederick Poole continued to have the work for a long time. And somebody found it at a local sale of paintings and just thought it was beautiful and that it would be perfect for our parish. Uh, that painting uh, was in an um, antique store up here that no longer exists. And my mother, Florence Wilterding, was quite a collector and had quite an eye. And she saw it in the back room one day. And she purchased it and then had it restored and framed and gave it to what is, was St. Rosalia's, which is now part of the Stella Maris Parish. Dynamic symmetry was um, a a method of laying out and designing and planning a painting and artwork. A method kind of like the old golden rule that they always had for classical painting. A lot of just planning angles and things to lead from one place in the painting to another and tie the whole thing together. He was really good. He could do any kind of art, really. He's got that classical style and method, but he still was experimental. Uh, he'd try all kinds of different things. And they get into fantasy 
art too. And a lot of the stuff that he did was that way. They might have been for illustrations for books and things, but um, they still always had that kind of, you know, fantasy feel. Both my um, grandparents and my great-grandparents are buried here in Bailey's Harbor. Even though my great-grandparents and my grandfather were from England originally and my grandmother was from Canada. But this is where they all wanted to be at the end of their lives. Mm -hmm.